What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Modi J and we are locked in. This is episode three of Atlanta. We seen in episode two, Ern was a little bit petty when it came to setting up that lady Lisa, especially because of everything she did when it came to TSA. Now, each one of these episodes, they're different. And this week, we're going to see primarily focusing on Al paperboy and him getting off tour and trying to figure out what's next now before we jump into it and break down this episode if you like atlanta live after show discussions we will be doing one tonight 9 p.m eastern also breakdowns of the episodes recaps hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell also hit that like button and follow me on instagram m-o-e-d-o-t-j now let's go ahead and jump into it this is episode three of atlanta We start the episode off with Paperboy coming off the stage. We doing it big. We got the cake in the back. It say Atlanta on it. But then this white man in the suit comes up and he's talking to Paperboy, asking him, how do you do that? How do you control the crowd? He's like, man, that's what I do. I'm a rapper. He's like, dang, man, that does look easy. Paperboy's like, yeah, so what do you want? Well, he has an offer. My son does music and I want you to come and, you know, basically be his mentor, his tutor, help him out. Paperboy saying, I don't know about that. I'm kind of busy. You got to talk to my manager. Now, he starts talking numbers and he says, I'll give you a million to do it. Paperboy's like, hmm, I might take that job. What's your name again, sir? Now we go and we focus on Earn now. And what he's in is a meeting. You know how it is. A boss calls you in because somebody messed up. One of their signees that does books actually pulled a gun on a young black man. So right now, what they need to do is figure out how they're gonna cover this up. PR is working overtime now. They gotta rebrand, come up with a new image because this looks bad and she's one of the top sellers, so she's a priority. Ern is sitting in the back just like you and I, and we listen to this like, this is stupid. But he does have a good idea. He says, why don't we just pick a different person? Why don't we work on someone else instead of focusing on her when she's messed up? maybe sign somebody new now boss man they don't want to hear this so he's asking them okay earn then who are we gonna focus on he's like uh I, I i don't know but it does make sense why not just let whatever she got blow over and we start fresh see the direction that they're going in they're trying to put out data of the crime in that area to say that hey she was well within her right to defend herself but then they're saying well, Ern, since you have these bright ideas of signing someone else, do you have anybody? Someone like Banksy, maybe D'Angelo? He's like, uh, he don't have any connections, but he's like, I could probably get D'Angelo. Now you hear everybody laughing because we ain't seen D'Angelo in so long, but he sends him on his way. You better come back with something because you know when the boss sends you off and tells you to do something, you better get it done. Now you see, as soon as he leaves the meeting, he gets on that phone. Hey, do you still got D'Angelo's hair braider? You got to find somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. Y'all know how networking is. Paperboy shows up to the studio. Now, he's supposed to be working with a kid named Benny. And inside the booth, we got this yodeling kid. And he's yodeling. 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 And he comes out the booth. He's like, man, that song dead. What's next? They talking about dude to Ricky. Paperboy says, man, I'm here to work with somebody named Benny. He's like, oh, what's up? Now, this is the kid, Benny. And you know how it is. Social media, parents got money. He don't give a damn about anything. He does whatever he wants. He talking about, I'm about to get in the booth. We about to do this Ricky thing. Yeah, we going in. And Paperboy's sitting there listening to all this nonsense. Like, man, what the hell did I get into? But even Benny tells him, man, you can just sit on the couch and collect that check. Uh, M, you better believe I'm on that couch. Sleep. In comes Little Ricky. They about to go do whatever the song they doing. Little Ricky this, Little Ricky talk. I'm like, man, this shit trash. But this guy Bunk comes in with him. He's like, oh, paper boy, I know who you are. He's like, oh, I know who you are too, Bunk. I listen to your music. Cool. And he's like, man, you trying to sit in here and listen to this nonsense or come down to Studio 3, smoke with your boy a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Go converse, you know, have a conversation. And of course, we not sitting in this studio. We about to collect this M and just go down to the other studio. Now they down in Studio 3, they blowing Dodo. Indo, Loud Pack, whatever you want to call it, they got it, that loud, yeah. And Paperboy, he's looking at it just like I am. I'm gonna collect this M, doing what I do, sitting around, smoking, chilling on the clock. Now Bunk is saying, man, you could be getting 10, 15 M's for what you are doing. Me and a couple of the guys, we got a little meeting where we come together 
and you know we put our ideas together because that show money it ain't gonna last forever this m you ain't doing the game right so paperboy's listening to him he's like well hell he cool all right why not man he telling me i can make more than an m off of doing what i'm already doing and i ain't doing nothing so a little bit of work to get 10 let's do it Ern gets the location of where d'angelo's hair braider is they drop the location and it's at a rallies now rallies and checkers they the same exact the same thing just different names but they pretty cool to go to you know i go to checkers every now and then when i was in arizona but he shows up and he's looking for a hair braider why are we at a rallies now he goes around the back of the building because obviously he's not gonna go inside of a fast food restaurant looking for the braider so he goes around back goes in the bathroom and it's a man sitting there he ain't doing no talking he reading a book next to a big ass vault door i don't even know where this place is this big concrete room can't be in rallies the man doesn't talk so he just points over into that direction over there and says, hey <laughs> go wait in the waiting area now there's a bucket over there y'all know what that bucket folks you're gonna be waiting for a while and it's a little bitty ass sleeping bag on here you about to be on concrete flow hey man good luck we don't need d'angelo that bad paperboy shows up to the ywa meeting this is when bunk said everybody's going to we gonna all come in here we gonna all sit down and we gonna talk about how we can turn that m into 10 to 15. sign me up and one of the dudes at the table, he actually sliding over some cookies. Them things look terrible. I wouldn't have took it. I would have got me a water from the back and just chilled at another table. All right, it's meeting time. Sit up. But if you in here because you are a rapper or you're dealing with rap, get the hell out right now. Because if rapping meant you made money, Cassidy would be a billionaire. Basically what he's saying is because you rap, that doesn't mean you make money because the best rapper ain't making the most money. You see what I'm saying? So you are interested in your future moving forward. So let's jump into this slide here. And what do they show us first? They show us a white boy surrounded by black people, that image. And only one of these people in this image has a billion streams globally. Can you guess who it is? Now he says YWA plus Grammys equals money. Paper the boy doesn't know what a YWA is. So let me explain to you what a YWA is. Young White Avatar. Mm hmm. Young White Avatar. What is an avatar? Somebody is controlling the avatar. So basically, what he's saying is grab you a white boy, one of these young white boys, teach them how to rap, teach them how to have that swag, that flow, that presence when they walk in the room. They're like, damn, this white boy can rap. And you make money off of them. So instead of getting $1 million to just hang out, teach that boy how to rap grab you a young white avatar now you hear paper boy talk about man i can make music way better than them kids any of them they like yeah you can but is your album gonna be bigger than the last one you got to go on tour and do all of this when you can work and put in work to get them to add that image and they blow up and you just recruit everything so when you think about it, the business model is good until they get on and leave you. That's what you got to make sure you got that paperwork right or you getting that 10 to 15 up front. Then they start explaining the time cycle of a black rapper. You start off young, impersonable. Everybody's listening to him. Chief Keith, oh yeah, they barely love so yeah. Then you become the OG and everybody like, dang man, he was a pioneer. He was really doing it. And then you three or four years away from being ice cube's best friend and are we there yet five because that's what the older rappers do now if you're getting in good situations like say a method man or somebody ludicrous yeah it's gonna be very very lucrative but if not you're just gonna be an extra and you remember when paperboy went into the studio no one remembered him no one knew who he was except for the yodeling kid Paperboy heard that. He said, you know what? This Benny kid, <laughs> let me go get my young white avatar right now. So he pulls up to the school. You see him over here flexing that money. Now his dad got a million, a million to give Paperboy to just sit in the studio and tutor and mentor his son. And what is his son doing? He blowing cash, but it don't matter. He got his own security out here. It don't matter, but they ain't supposed to be on the premises anyway. Now the yodeling kid, he knew who Paperboy was, and he on a perk over here. I'm talking, can you do it on a perk? Yeah. 
the girl over here she looking at him he got this cowboy hat on they didn't already told him you ain't supposed to be here but he's hot high as hell right now they eventually get benny from over there and he's talking to him hey you know what we need to get our relationship a little bit closer because he went to that meeting and the young white avatar is standing right here in his face he's like hey you and i get closer you know saying we work on your raps your image and everything he said oh no don't worry about it i'm with bunk so bunk playing the game he got there first he's seen his white avatar he said man you know what let me get that one well it looks like paperboy said well i can't get benny might as well get this yodeling kid so he tells him i'm gonna give you a ride home because benny and his security they dipped out now he on this perk he high as hell he about to throw up and of course man you ain't throwing up in my truck especially not this this is the 22 escalator you think man you tripping he tells him get away from the vehicle and throw up earn has been in here he's counting down the days man it's been a while hmm. can only imagine being in there that long and that guy's still just sitting there reading. He got a tennis ball, throwing it against the wall. He bored. Been in here for like a week. Got him writing on the wall. D'Angelo question mark. Is D'Angelo going to show up? What the hell? He's been sitting in here. He got his shirt off. This is America. He told me, I mean, y'all got some water or something? He didn't open up this cabinet. You got a squirt bottle in there. And at the bottom of it, you got a whole package of Dasani. Room temperature water. Who drinks Dasani? I will if I'm thirsty. I tell you that. But he's like, look, this ain't it. I need to talk to Angelo right now. I need to see him. Ernest had enough. He's like, look, man, I need to talk to D'Angelo ASAP, man. I've been here for weeks. That water is warm. <sighs> so the guy opens up this little compartment. And just like when they were leaving Atlantic Station, going through a dark room. Yep, that's the same thing he's doing now. Now tell me how can you stop the sun from shining he didn't crawl through this tunnel just to see d'angelo in here playing the video game sitting in an inflatable swimming pool making a chicken sandwich he's like man what the hell is d'angelo doing only to find out when he turns around this ain't d'angelo he said you wanted the d'angelo experience and right now we are both d'angelo Ernest, like Man, I ain't took a bath in four days, man. What the hell is going on here? He in here talking this nonsense, talking about people aren't believers, but you proved that you are worthy of the D'Angelo experience and you are now protected. He didn't put peanut butter on this man's head. He didn't sit in here for four days. He talking about, I was supposed to sign D'Angelo. The only thing he got was some peanut butter. It ain't even crunchy peanut butter. It's that cream peanut butter. Ern said, man, I'm out of here. I done told my boss that I could probably get D'Angelo, and I done got fake Angelo. He told me, man, were you trying to really sign me? He looked at him like, hell no, he ain't signing you, man. Benny and Bunk, the combination we didn't know we needed, but he got his young white avatar and his selfie time. Y'all know what it is, marketing. Paperboy showed up, he clean as hell. Talking about, what's up, y'all? Yeah, man. We at the Grammys, we made it to a spot that we didn't think we were going to make it without these young white avatars. They like, you got a Grammy nomination? He said, nah, but my artist does. Y'all heard of the Yodel Kid? Song been out three weeks, platinum. That's it, that's all it took. 11 days, the song been out, platinum. They like, damn, who'd you pay for this? Paperboy's like, hey man, I learned a lot from y'all, but we all gotta pay somebody to get what we wanna get, right? Now, Paperboy is trying to find out, hey Benny, where's Yodel Kid at? It's like, oh man, he dead. Dead, like dead, dead, or? You just talking that trash. He said, oh no, a couple hours ago, the driver went to pick him up. Man, it looked like he od Now, I don't know why Paperboy didn't go get him or go over there and they ride together, but it is what it is, man. Benny said he gone. Paperboy's like, oh man, he died for real? Benny's like, yeah, he'll probably win that Grammy though. He done lost his young white avatar. Just went platinum in the streets and now he od would in the streets. R.I.P. the Yodel Kid, born to die. Man, we had a hit on our hands. The crew gets together. Yodel Kid wins the rap album of the year. And you hear Darius say the Grammys ain't no place for no black man. You see how they do it. They be giving them album of the years, rap album of the years to them white boys. Some of them can rap though, I ain't gonna lie. But that's just what they were doing to play on here. And Paperboy says, I ain't cut out for this manager job. How you, how you do it, man? 
Ernest said, look, it ain't about liking it or anything. It's about what survives. But I got business to go handle. And Darius talking about it's an after party. Paperboy sits there. And as soon as he got on with his young white avatar, it was over. All right, let me know what you think about episode three, man. Yo, look kid, he had a promising future, man. And would y'all have waited four days in that stinking bathroom with no way to bathe and just Dashani water waiting to go talk to D'Angelo to find out that it was a fake one? Let me know what you think. I'm Moda J. If you like the content, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you tune in tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern. We're going to go over the first three episodes of Atlanta, and we'll probably have some free time. But thanks for watching. I'm out.